Hello, it is 11 a.m. in Hamburg. It's 10 a.m. here in London. I'm Onita Rajpal. You're watching World One. Hello, a rare and deadly strain of the E. coli bacteria is no longer confined to Europe. The bacteria has already killed 17 people. Authorities in the U.S. say three people have now fallen ill from E. coli. All of them had recently been to Germany, the center of the current outbreak. Experts say there's no reason for Americans to panic. Scientists in Germany at first said incorrectly the bacteria had been traced to cucumbers imported from Spain. What resulted was a backlash against Spanish produce and an industry that would stand to lose around $300 million a week. While the Spanish say their produce is safe to eat, they have had to fight to clear their name. The government is arguing vegetables vegetable growers who lost business should get compensation. For more on this, we're joined by CNN's Al Goodman in Almera in southern Spain. Al. Hi, Monita. Well, I am on a farm, a cucumber farm here in Almeria, just, uh, just near Almeria, where the, uh, the farmer, Manuel Sanchez Moreno, has been in this business for 40 years. Just in the past week, he's had to lose about 50,000 euros. I'm walking through uh, row upon row of cucumbers. All right, Al Goodman in southern Spain, thank you so much. In Libya, a surprising twist in a story we've been following for several weeks. The story of the woman who says she was gang raped by Colonel Gaddafi's security forces. This is Eman Alabedi. You may remember her as the woman who burst into the lobby of a hotel in Tripoli, accusing security forces of assaulting her. Night's Watch says Alabedi's enforced return to Libya, the country where she alleges she was raped, is cruel and a violation of international law. We want to get more now from CNN Sarah Seidner. She's in the rebel health city of Misrata. Sarah, first of all, let's talk about the fact that uh, uh, Ms. Alabedi is saying that it's been the, the rebels, the National Transitional Council. Those are the ones that, they're, that have, been asked, have been asking for her to be returned to Libya. What are they saying? Uh, we have not heard anything from the opposition formed National Transitional Council on this specific issue. Radko Milotic, the former commander of the Bosnian Serb army, has told the UN War Crimes Tribunal the charges against him are obnoxious. Milotic, Milotic is making his first appearance before the tribunal on charges of genocide, murder and other atrocities committed between 1992 and 1995. After the charges were read out to him in court, Milaj said, quote, I have not heard these monstrous words before. The 69-year-old's lawyer argued Milaj wasn't well enough to stand trial. Let's bring in CNN's Atika Schubert, who's uh, following the process for us. And first of all, I guess Atika, describe for us the process at this point and what we've been seeing uh, this morning at The Hague. Well, basically, what's supposed to happen today and what has happened is Milaj basically has the charges read out to him and he's supposed to enter a plea. Mm. But Milaj, as you heard earlier, has said, uh, you know, that these charges were obnoxious, these are monstrous words, and said that he would need more than a month to respond. So clearly he's trying to delay the plea process. Uh, however, the judge has said he has scheduled another hearing for July 4th. Seems fine. We'll have to see what the defense says going forward. All right, Atika Stamba, let's go now to Mark Ellis of the International Bar Association who joins us in the studio. Mark has been working as an advisor to various bodies regarding crimes committed during the wars in the Balkans. Mark, thank you very much for being with us. So we understand now that uh, Mr. Milodic has delayed entering a plea. What does that mean in terms of legal terms and what happens now in that process? Well, in legal terms, under the ICTYs, under the court statute, he'll have 30 days uh, to inform the court whether he's going to plead guilty or not guilty to each of those 11 counts. So much, Mark Ellis here in London. Well, now that Mladic is behind bars, Serbia is one step closer to joining the European Union, but it still has a long way to go. In the fall, the European Commission will decide whether to open formal EU membership talks with Serbia. This is World okay. One, live from London. Another cyber setback for Sony. Hackers say they've made a mockery of its online security. You are watching World One. Here are some of the stories we're talking about. Sony was asking for it. That's what a group of hackers is saying after claiming they stole the personal details of more than a million users from the website sonypictures.com. The group says it exposed shortcomings in Sony's online security. It is the second cyber attack on the Japanese company systems in as many months. So-called hacktivists cracked the PlayStation Network in April. Here's something to ponder while you're percolating your morning coffee. Apparently, it could lead to cancer. That's according to the World Health Organization, which includes coffee in the same group of possible carcinogens as cell phones, pickled vegetables, and gasoline. Don't panic, though. 
if you're a man anyway. Coffee has also been linked to a lowered risk of fatal prostate cancer. When police officers in the American state of Missouri were called to investigate an alligator on the loose, they certainly thought it looked lively enough. So much so that they shot at it not once, but twice. If they'd taken a closer look, they might have realized that it posed little danger as it's cast in concrete and owned by a man who hopes it will keep people off his property. You're watching World One, live from London. The United Nations Refugee Agency says it tried to stop Qatar from deporting al Abedi, but their attempts were ignored. We want to speak to the UNHCR now. Sibylla Wilkes joins us from Geneva. Ms. Wilkes, thank you very much for being with us. We understand that the representative from the UNHCR was at the hotel, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, he was at the hotel, and, but was denied entry and denied any access to her. Um, what have you heard now? Have you spoken to the, the Qatari government at all? Well, we, we, have, we have been in touch with the Qatari government, but I think that the key point is that they didn't listen to us. Uh, Street battles have continued overnight in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, and on into Friday morning. Story. Let's go to CNN's Mohammed Jamjoon. He joins us now. Uh, following, he's following the developments uh, from Abu Dhabi. Uh, Mohammed, tell us what can we expect this Friday? We understand there will be Friday morning prayers, prayers and this is obviously a very uh, tense and sensitive time. All right. Mohammed, thank you for that. Mohammed Jamjoon reporting to us there from Abu Dhabi. We are going to take you now to The Hague and back to the, the courtroom where Ratko Mladic has been making his first appearance uh, at uh, the uh, ICTY. Let's take a listen. And dignity, except that, except for the procedure, and I have to say that that bothers me, it really irritates me. He was an iconic figure whose death shocked the sporting world. 17 years after Ayrton Senna's fatal crash at the San Marino Grand Prix, his legend lives on. And as Don Riddell reports, a new movie has F1 fans on the edge of their seats. He was one of the greatest racing drivers of all time. Welcome back. This is World One live from London. We are coming up on uh, 6 a.m. in New York, noon in Berlin, 7 p.m. in Tokyo. A rare and deadly strain of the E. coli bacteria that has killed 17 people in Europe has now spread even further. Three cases have been reported in the United States. All of the people with the infection had recently been to Germany, the center of the current outbreak. Well, for more on that, we want to talk to the chairman and medical director of the Hamburg Medical Center in Germany. Dr. Jörg de Batin joins us now via Skype. Sir, thank you very much for, for being with us. Uh, they are some, some microbiologists are saying that uh, this particular strain is, um, well, they say that E. coli is rarely spread from person to person. They say that this particular strain could indeed spread from person to person. Well, we know a lot about E. coli because we've been dealing with um, strains there are for a very long time. This particular strain is very special. We've been able to decode its genetic information uh, just um, uh, 24 hours ago. And um, as we look at that, we are obviously learning a lot more about uh, this particular bacteria. And what is uh, apparent um, just by looking at the patients is that it can, in fact, be very virulent and it can, in fact, uh, cause very severe symptoms particularly in the kidneys and, uh, and the brain. When you say um, that you've been able to detect, uh, I guess, uncover the, the genetic uh, code of this, uh, this bacteria, does this mean that uh, you have an idea of where it came from, the source of this outbreak? Unfortunately, we don't. Um, the source is still um, a mystery to everybody. It's the uh, German equivalent of the Center for Disease Control, who are obviously very busy trying to track down all kinds of leads. It, uh, at this point, uh, we still have to assume that it has something to do with vegetables. Mm. And that's why we continue to refrain from the consumption of uh, raw vegetables, particularly cucumbers, tomatoes, and salads. And again, no idea in terms of which country those vegetables uh, may have originated from. So what, people, what, so what should people do at this point when they go shopping? Uh, we're always being told you should eat vegetables as part of your healthy diet. So what should they do now? Well, the epicenter of this uh, endemic um, um, uh, breakout of uh, this E. coli strain is really in northern Germany. So for people who actually are living in northern Germany or are visiting northern Germany, uh, the advice of the Robert Koch Institute um, is, and, and that would also be our advice, to refrain from eating raw vegetables. No cucumbers, no tomatoes, no salads. Um, you can sort of sum it up, either peel it, cook it, or leave it. And that's sort of a, a good way to, to live by. And uh, fortunately, there are lots of other things that we can actually eat. Who is at most at risk at this point? 
Uh, we are seeing um, p uh, pediatric uh, patients, kids, but also particularly a lot of young adults, particularly young women. We're currently caring for about 105 patients who have the complication of the normal infection, which is called HU syndrome, hemolytic uremic syndrome. These patients get very sick. About 30% uh, of them um, we are taking care in our intensive care units. Um, some of these patients are intubated uh, because of their very severe neurologic symptoms. Um, so here we see um, a focus on young women. Five of them, in fact, are, are, are pregnant, um, which is uh, something that we, we haven't seen before. And uh, obviously, um, this is something that uh, has to do with a very particular uh, makeup of this, uh, of this bacteria. Okay, Dr. Jörg de Batin, uh, the director of the Hamburg Medical Center in Germany. Sir, thank you very much for your time. Ratko Mladic, the former commander of the Bosnian Serb Army, has told the UN War Crimes Tribunal the charges against him are obnoxious. That was in his first court appearance today. CNN's Nick Robertson was in the court. He joins us now from The Hague. Describe for us what you saw while in there. Nick Robertson at The Hague, thank you so much. You're watching World One, live from London. The news continues here on CNN.